controllers are pretty important. They're kind of needed to, you know, play the game. You want to make your character do this? You're going to need one of these to do it. Controllers literally come in all different shapes and sizes, and it's all up to personal preference as to what you like. I know a few psychopaths whose favorite controller is the N64 controller, those absolute monsters! But at the end of the day, a controller made by the company themselves should just feel... right. The weight should be good, the buttons should feel snappy and smooth, and most importantly, how it rests in your hands should feel natural. Like the controller is an extension of yourself. That's gotta be the stupidest thing I've ever said. But what we have in this box today goes against everything I just said. I bought a bunch of bootleg controllers! Yeah! Take a look at some of these bad boys. Literally, they're bad. BE BETTER! I went to a local antique store of all places and came across them. Yeah. Real antique we got here. Just like my great-great-grandma used to play with. First up, I got the SharkPad Pro 64 squared. Nothing like doing some math to get into the Mario Party mood, am I right? This thing is... I don't know. It definitely has its upsides. The two handles on the left and right of the controller are shortened, meaning your hands lay in a more comfortable and natural position to hit all the buttons. It's rounded off similar to a Sega Genesis controller. And I do love the purple translucent plastic. It's super nostalgic, reminding me of the 90s and early 2000s Game Boys that had a similar design. I love this aesthetic, we really gotta bring this back. And that's where my compliments kinda end. The main gripe I have with this thing is that the buttons are just so stiff. Like, you really have to press down on them if you want the button command to register. That's a reoccurring problem we're gonna see with a lot of these bootleg controllers. Like, with any official controller, no matter how old, you can always just put a slight bit of pressure on the buttons and they work. But with the shark pad squared, if you're not absolutely showing that A button who's boss, then good luck. I also plugged it in hoping it would light up, but no. I expected too much of this bootleg. And to round off this terrible time, the joystick is the stiffest of them all. This is the biggest downfall of the controller, because if you end up playing a game that requires precise and sudden movement, you're not gonna be able to pull it off. If I were to give this controller a letter grade, I'd give it a D. Up next, I got the 16-bit Super Game Controller. I personally don't think you could have been more generic with the name! Why not call it, hey, this Super Nintendo controller is only $10? Cause that's all this really is. The shape, size, and even surprisingly weight of it feels identical to a real Super Nintendo controller. When I first used this controller, it was really responsive and the buttons were so satisfying. A controller that really nails satisfying button presses deserves to be praised. Like, the L and R buttons are spring-loaded, making that oh-so-satisfying clicking noise. And hey, look at that! It's also got that 90s translucent aesthetic. Blue, purple, and pink are the best colors for that in my opinion. Anyway, by the sounds of this thing, it should be an a controller. It's cheap, but actually feels like a working, competent controller. Well, that's what I would have liked to have said, but after playing with it one time, it stopped working. Just flat out, none of the buttons worked. I unplugged it, plugged it back in, tried out other controllers to see if it was the Super Nintendo itself, but the controller in someone else's Super Nintendo, but no. The controller just flat out stopped working after one time. So because of that, it's a piece of crap, F minus. It's a Wii Remote. The Nyko branded Wii Remote. A fairly common remote, actually. I've seen them at a lot of my friends' houses when I was younger. There was always at least one of them sitting there in the corner building up dust because no one wanted to use it. But was that hatred and segregation of the controller truly warranted? No, it's actually pretty nifty. These things came in multiple different colors. I just happened to find the black one. The white one, I gotta admit, looks extra bootleggy, so... Yeah, I'm glad I got this one. The look and feel of this thing is almost identical to the original Wii Remote, and putting them side by side really just shows that they're kind of exactly the same. Like, exactly- Oh, wait, 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 wait! The power button's on the other side. You see that? Now you can't sue us, Nintendo! Apart from that, though, this controller feels really good and natural in your hands. If I was blindfolded and you handed me this controller without telling me it was a bootleg, 
I wouldn't have known the difference. It's the little things that really shows you they wanted to make a good product. Like the consistency of the buttons. The B trigger feels different than the A button and the plus and minus buttons. Each one feels exactly like they did on the Wii remote. So A plus for this controller. I'm sorry for never choosing you when I was a kid. I was young and dumb. Alright, now here's this hunk of junk. The Game Elements PlayStation 2 controller. And it's... It's wrong. It's all horribly wrong! It's such a thick and chunky mess. The handles are curved in such an awkward way. Like, why does this right angle exist? It feels comfortable to hold like this, but then I can only touch less than half of the buttons. Speaking of the buttons, what? What is this? PlayStation doesn't own triangles and squares. They don't have to look like this at all. I hate how edgy they are, metaphorically and literally speaking. You could tell this was marketed for the hardcore epic gamers of 2006, but I promise you, you won't be beating any game with this thing. There's so many unnecessary features, controlling the intensity of the rumbo, turbo mode, and the L1 and R1 buttons can only be pressed on the inside portion of the buttons. It's kinda weird to explain. Let me use this paper for example. Normally, the entire button is able to be pressed down and hit the pressure pad, but with this monstrosity, the buttons are on a trajectory, and it's on an angle of sorts. So, you need to press them in a very specific place, otherwise it'll be a struggle to activate it. Look, if I need to bust out the origami demonstration, you went wrong somewhere! This controller is literally just the crappy one you give your friend when he comes over so you can have the advantage. It's also kinda heavy. Like, listen to this thud. That's crazy. This controller gets an F-. Zero redeemable qualities about this thing! I might break it at the end of the video. And last, but certainly not least, I have the Pelican G3 Wireless GameCube controller. This is a controller I've actually had for years, ever since like 2007. You could tell because it's a little dusty. I uh... I kinda had to dig it out from the back of my closet. To be fair, it's not the worst controller out there. It needs batteries, which kinda sucks. The weight feels good, and it's a little thicker in all the right places. <laughs> what are you doing later? The only real issue I have with this controller are that the face buttons are really stiff. Like, again, you need to press on them. Which can sometimes lead to inputs not registering, and leading again to angry gamer moments. Being wireless is kinda cool, and the connection was usually okay. Honestly, since I've busted this thing out for the video, I'm kinda getting nostalgic for it. I'd say that this is a B-plus controller. And those were just a few bootleg controllers that... probably didn't need to exist. Which one scared you the most? Let me know in the comments down below, and uh... Oh, that's right! We have some unfinished business.